Hello, and welcome to the Pragmatic Live podcast series, where we tackle the biggest challenges facing today's product management, product marketing, and other market and data-driven professionals with some of the best minds in the industry. I am Rebecca Calajaris, Vice President of Marketing at Pragmatic Institute, and your host for this episode. Today, we are joined by Anery Shaw, who is currently a Product Marketing Manager at Facebook with previous stints at Glassdoor, Microsoft, and Clever. Welcome, Anery. Hi, I'm happy to be here. So I do product marketing for Facebook Newsfeed and Stories. Um, and the way that Facebook defines product marketing is really split into three segments, inbound, launch, and outbound. So inbound is everything that impacts the product strategy, whether that's uh, market research, competitive analysis, market sizing, um, helping define the product roadmap. It's a lot of the work that goes into making sure that the product is uh, exactly the one that the market needs and that people are going to use. Um, launch is obviously the bread and butter of a lot of product marketing, making sure that you have the messaging and positioning, um, you have an airtight uh, launch plan with all of the channels lined up, um, and that you're able to land the key messages that you want. And then finally, outbound is uh, what we consider to lead growth and adoption. So often that can include advertising, but can, it can also include um, in-product growth lovers, could include other channels like email. Um, so those are the three main things that make up the Facebook PMM role. Uh, prior to Facebook, I've actually always worked in product marketing. Um, I started at Microsoft right out of college, uh, where I focused on um, product marketing for Yammer and Office 365. And then I moved to Clever, which is an education startup where I led product marketing for both uh, schools and school districts, as well as application developers and partners. I would say the number one tool that we use is research. Um, we go out into the field for uh, market research, user research really frequently and really try and get a sense of the diversity of some of those users, um, looking at kind of what is your average American user. And I was reminded that there are a lot of people who don't have smartphones. Um, there was someone we met who goes to the library once a week to use a computer, and that's the only access he has to a computer. Um, you know, just people who are uh, have really those different relationships with technology. And then on the flip side, I've been to Bangkok where, uh, they would say an inactive Facebook user or someone who posts about eight times a day. So it's really just very different. Someone described Facebook as their third eye in terms of just how crucial it was to their life. And I think being in the field with those users is so important to get a sense of the cultural context that surrounds their usage, um, what they're interested in, what their priorities are, and then how you can build a better product for them. Well, it's just two great examples of very different users. So when you go out into the field and you collect that information and you obviously want to bring it into the to the wider uh, Facebook community, how do you guys share what you learned on your visits? Yeah, um, so we usually stream the research back uh, to headquarters so that people who aren't able to make it on the trip are still able to listen in and observe the sessions. Um, we'll present decks uh, that are usually led by the researchers. Um, often we'll have video clips that we use to illustrate specific points. And those video clips are both interviews of people talking as well as recordings of how they use their phone. And I think it's super interesting to see those recordings of how they use the product. Everyone's Facebook feed looks different and how they interact with the product looks really different too. Um, okay, so talk to me then a little bit about the, when you look at the all the different spots that you've talked about of product marketing uh, at Facebook, it seems like it's a very strategic role. It's a big part of defining product strategy and go-to-market strategy. And, and I, I think that a lot of our listeners um, are striving to be more and more strategic in that product marketing role. It's something that we at Pragmatic think of as very strategic, very grounded in the market and the information you get there. But I would love to hear from you sort of, uh, of, of how you've seen product marketing become more strategic and what you think our listeners could do to make sure that their role is, is having the type of impact and value within the organization that it can. Absolutely. So I think the number one thing is really embedding yourself within the product team. Um, I think marketing sometimes sits within the product team, often sits within the marketing team. And I think making sure that you're involved um, with the product team and the people who are day-to-day -day involved in building the product is the most important thing you can do. 
Um, so in addition to your PM, this can mean your engineers, designer, uh, researcher, data scientist, who, whoever you think those strategic partners are, um, who you can build relationships with and help impact down the line. And there are a lot of different ways to do this. I think being involved in planning is one of the best ways um, to bring your perspective to the table and showcase what kind of value you can add. Um, another quick one that really helped me was just sitting with uh, my product team. So physically, you know, moving my desk to be closer to there so that I could be involved in the day-to-day -day, um, kind of hallway conversations and conversations across our desks to cement myself as a key part of that team. Um, which meant moving away from sitting with the marketing team. But I think that was one of the things that really helped. Um, and then secondly, I would look at what is the unique input that you can bring in uh, to add that strategic voice? What are the sources of data or insight that the product team may not already be looking at um, that you can bring in? So I think competitive analysis is often one of the biggest things you can do here. You can go really, really deep on competitive analysis, and there are many ways to be able to surface um, some of these viewpoints. So one thing that I did in the really early stages of the product I was working on is our product hadn't launched yet. So there wasn't much we could do to understand um, customers' reactions to how they would use our product. However, I was able to take a similar product into focus groups and uh, get customers' understanding of that competitive product, which really helped shape the strategy of how we were able to build our own based on the insights that we were able to get about how they used other products in the market. So look for those novel opportunities um, to present insight. Another thing that I did recently was we launched an ad campaign about Facebook stories that was getting a lot of comments. One of the things that we found is that a lot of people understand the ephemeral nature of stories, the fact that stories last for 24 hours, but they don't understand why that's actually valuable. Um, and this is often feedback that we're getting from users who haven't used Instagram, haven't used Snapchat, haven't seen other stories products, so they don't necessarily see the value. So top two pieces of advice, one, embed yourself within the team, and then two, look for those kinds of novel insights or perspectives that you can bring to the table. By looking at metrics, reporting metrics and measurements, and I would love to hear some of your thoughts on that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, metrics are one of the most important tools that a marketer has. And um, as companies start to get more access uh, to data, there feels like there's almost an infinite number of things that can be measured. Um, Facebook is an extremely data-driven company. And so we are really grounded in the data and making sure that we're able to move metrics in a positive way. Uh, one thing that I think marketing has really been critical in showing is the importance of um, sentiment or survey metrics in addition to product metrics. So as an example, um, I work on Facebook stories and obviously one of our key metric goals is to increase uh, the number of story producers. Um, but one thing that we've been able to show is that in addition to story producers, you want to be able to increase the number of people who find stories useful, who understand stories, who know what stories are, and all of those things closer to the top of the funnel are blocking people from being able to use stories. So if in the short term, we're able to move some of those survey metrics, in the long term, we're going to be better positioned to be able to move the product metrics. And I think that's a key shift uh, for an organization that is so data-driven to make, um, to, to really understand the value of those survey metrics and the relationship between them and the product metrics. That's super interesting to think about the fact that you need to work on the consumer of the stories as much as you need to work on the producer of the stories to really drive those numbers up. And it makes complete sense. Um, but I could see how it also is, is somewhat counterintuitive when you first go into like, what are the metrics that matter that I'm trying to drive? Absolutely. Now that you've, you've obviously, you've been in product marketing for a long time. You've talked about that's how your whole career is. If you could go back in time to when you started, uh, what do you wish you knew then that you know now? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think one thing that a lot of product marketers struggle with is that it's a relatively new function and it's not super well defined at most companies. Um, a lot of companies still consider it similar to traditional marketing. A lot of companies consider it more like sales enablement. 
Um, and I think being able to really think about what do you think this role actually is? What do you think is the unique value you can bring to the organization? And then what are the kinds of activities that you like to do? Um, I think that the lack of role clarity is actually a huge opportunity in helping an individual product marketer uh, shape their role in the way that they want and, um, and really be able to surface the opportunities that add the most value to the organization. So I would say for someone who is earlier in their career in product marketing, make sure you spend the time thinking through what are some of the gaps that you're seeing in the organization? What are the things that no one's doing where you can add value? And then shape your role in that direction. I think that's great advice to not think of the lack of clarity or clearly defined like to do's for you as a, a weakness or a problem, but to look at it as an advantage, right? There isn't someone saying you need to do exactly this. There is an opportunity for you to find what you should be doing based on what you both like, are skilled at, and expertise, and where you think you'll have the biggest impact. Exactly. And I think one of the biggest blessings that I've had in my career is um, I worked for a long time on a product that hadn't yet launched. And often product marketing's role is to launch products, but spending over a year working on something that wasn't even close to launching, I was able to spend a lot of time uh, diving into that inbound piece and that product strategy and seeing how else could I add value on something that isn't launching? How can I help shape this product so that when it eventually does launch, we have the best launch possible? Um, and that's an experience that taught me so much. And so I would definitely urge other product marketers to consider things that feel often um, disappointing or challenging as opportunities. But even that, when you built that relationship ahead of time and that trust, then the feedback you give post-launch is heard entirely differently by the product management and the designers and the developers because you already have a relationship. It's not just like, oh, well, you know, you're just saying that because your program's not or your campaign is not performing like you wanted it to. Um, there's real trust and, and real sort of mutual understanding there. Exactly. So here's my other good question, but I think it's a tough question sometimes for people, is the... Of, when you look around at your peers in product marketing, what is something uh, that you've seen someone demonstrate there that you think, man, that is sort of the next thing I'm going to work on, the next piece that I want to go on, just something that you've, you've seen other product marketers do that's really impressed you? Yeah, it's a great question. I think one thing that I think about is because my entire career has been in product marketing, um, I don't think I'm able to bring as much of uh, the experience that comes from the other functions, mm -hmm. where sometimes I'll look at a product marketer who came from sales, for example, and they just have such an innate understanding of what kind of sales enablement materials uh, are necessary, what's going to resonate the best, and then they're able to bring that to their product marketing role. So one of the best pieces of advice that I've received in my career is that it makes sense to have both a major and a minor. And I think about, okay, if product marketing is my major, what is that minor where I can bring the skills from that function or discipline and use that to influence my marketing uh, perspective? I love that idea. Uh, another one uh, advice that I've been given is the um, think of your, your audience, like your salespeople, your development people as a market in of itself and, and think of them in the terms of a persona and what matters to them and um, when you talk about how you communicate with them. If you don't have that innate sales spot, really try to get it so that you're communicating in the way that most resonates with them. Yes, I love that. So we've talked a lot about a lot of different things today. Uh, if you could get our listeners to do two things differently based on what we talked about today, what would that be? I think the first thing is definitely identify who your stakeholders are and really focus on building relationships with them. I truly believe that relationships are what makes the difference when it comes to a great product marketer and they're gonna take you a long way. So especially as you start a new role or you start a, a new company, uh, make sure that you spend the time investing in those relationships so that your perspective um, can be heard more strongly down the line. And then the second thing is don't limit yourself to uh, a definition of what you think product marketing is or should be and make sure that you're finding the white space and looking for opportunities that you think exist, whether or not they fall within your job description and use those to make yourself a stronger marketer. Great, great, great advice for all of our listens, listeners. Thank you, Anari. This was a great conversation. I really appreciate you joining us today. I've been so happy to be here. Super excited um, to be more involved in the pragmatic community. Awesome.
All right. That does it for today's episode. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And don't forget to join us next week when we tackle another great topic designed to help you elevate your product, your company, and your career. 